Welcome to another episode of the of Yacht College. Sorry, I'm getting an echo in my ear, and I'm gonna have to take off my headphones. This is Pub 140 Knowledge Testing and Contest Format, which will serve as your final. I am Jeremiah O'Shan, the self-appointed Dean of Yacht College. But as usual, I'll be taking a secondary role today. Before we get started, though, I want to remind everyone of two things. If you'd like what you see today, we've still got one more day of programming. That is, of course, uh, of course, GM442, How to Build a Dynasty with Garth Logaway, which we're calling our commencement address. If you'd like to participate in that, there's still some space left, and registration is free. I should also note that uh, we're doing this as a fundraiser for Seattle Children's Autism Center. You can make a tax-deductible donation by visiting give.seattlechildrens.org slash yachtcon. If you'd like to share your results, please tag us on Twitter and use the hashtag yachtcollegefinal. And as part of that, I should also say that we have a campaign going called Blue Ocean, in which I have, for some reason, agreed to dye my hair blue if we get to $5,000 in direct donations. We're about $1,500 short of that goal right now. So if you want to see my hair blue, uh, punch that that give button. Uh, but with all that said, I will be making room for today's proctors, Tim Foss and Beth Mantle. You hopefully know both of them from Sounder at Heart, where they've been hugely important parts of our team for several years. Welcome to Yacht College. Hey, guys. Hey, hey Jeremiah. Apparently, my audio is a little off, so I'm just going to go ahead and get out of the way and let you two take over here, uh, and uh, you have fun. All right. So uh, for those who have not already received instructions... The quiz today is going to be held using the Kahoot app. Uh, to get started, you're going to head to kahoot.it. So that's K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. Uh, and you will be prompted to enter a pin to join the game. That pin is the number you see on the screen over there. Uh, Eight 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 zero nine four two. You then are going to enter a nickname for the game, preferably something that we can use to track you down after the game so that we can give you prizes should you win and prove yourself deserving of them. Uh, Beth, if you want to give an explanation of sort of how Kahoot works. Yeah, so if you didn't happen to spend a lot of your high school experience on Kahoot, um, so I will tell you a bit about how it works. So on the main screen where you currently see the waiting room and the pin is going to turn into your question prompt eventually. Um, it'll tell you the question and then it'll show you four different answer options. Each one is color coded and also shape coded. Um, and on the device that you are using to play, um, those four options will pop up on your device. Um, you get points for getting the answer right, and you also get additional points depending on how fast you answer it. So speed is your best friend here. Um, so yeah, once the question comes up, we'll read you the question, you'll see the question, and then it's up to you to pick the right answer. Uh, the exam today, your Yacht College final, consists of just over 50 questions. I think it's about 52 total. The bulk of those concern professional soccer in the Puget Sound, uh, focusing on the Sounders MLS era and the NWSL reign. Uh, there are a few questions at the end that are going to check how much attention you've paid to Yacht College throughout the, the session here. Uh, there are questions pertaining to each and every course so far. So taking every course like our own Wade Weber is going to be to your benefit. Um, I think we're going to give folks a few more minutes. We do have more registered folks than these 17 players already in the game. And if you have not registered already, you are you know, welcome to join. We do still encourage you to visit uh, the donation link to give to the Children's Hospital autism services. Uh, the encouraged donation is $10, but 
If you are unable, we certainly understand. Yeah, um, while we're waiting for people to get on, we'd also like to shout out Washington Legends of Soccer who uh, uh, help influence some of these questions. Also, uh, before a college exam, uh, traditionally you will have to sign a disclaimer that's saying that you did not cheat, you did not receive help, um, and you did not use uh, unpermitted sources for your material, but um, this is Yacht College, and this is Kahoot, and it speed counts, so if you think cheating will help, I mean, I guess that's a strategy. So, it's up to you. It is a soccer quiz, and the dark arts, while they may be frowned upon by some, are certainly part of the game, and this is no different. Um, it is also, while it is a college final, it is a pub quiz. So if you feel that you need to get into the spirit, um, hopefully you have already acquired some craft casual, the beer brewed for the event in partnership with Fast Fashion Brewing and Stoop Brewing. Um, got a, you know, a good look at that during the pizza course last night, but, uh, you know, maybe you're not a beer person. Maybe you still have some leftovers from the cocktail class, courtesy of the doctor's office, or you happen to be a full pull wines subscriber and you've got a, a glass that you can pour from something you got from them. Uh, however you want to approach this is more than welcome, but those are certainly our suggestions. I think real college finals tend to end up being pub quizzes more often than not, if we're going to be honest here. I didn't take a lot of them, but I will say that was how I approached most of them. Um, we we're still going to give people a few more minutes. This is a slightly later start, but that just happens. It's a pandemic. Our sense of time is distorted at the moment. It's better than an 8 a.m. Saturday final, which I keep getting scheduled for. I'm sure that you have committed some sin that you are being punished for it has as to a be. result. It has to be. No one would schedule a final that early if it wasn't punishment for something. Yeah, I can't imagine a good reason to do that, frankly. All right, so we will start at 7.15. That gives you a few more minutes if you've already got yourself set up to refill your drink or use the restroom. Cram a few more random soccer Wikipedia articles uh, and gives any stragglers we have a chance to get involved before we get started. Uh, we do not think people can join mid flow. So I want to make sure that we give people the best opportunity to get into the game and be able to play as possible. Unlike real college professors, we will not be getting passive aggressive with you if you show up a few minutes late. I will not randomly throw a test at you if you're a few minutes late. So it'll be, go it'll be all good. Being late is just a part of life. There's sometimes things you can't avoid and coming to that realization is a valuable thing of going to therapy, I think for me. Maybe a younger version of me would have been frustrated, but right now I just am understanding and appreciative for the opportunity to drink more of my own fast casual.
one good thing is that the less people that are playing, the more likely you are to win a prize. And prizes are the real reason we all go to college. If I'd gotten more prizes, I might have stuck with it. Who knows? I to give myself stars to do my work now, so college is going pretty great for me. That seems like a pretty good arrangement. Uh, all right, we've got 18 folks. It is 7.15. Let's get this party started. Good luck, everybody. We believe in you. This is knowledge testing in contest format. Fittingly, our first round is firsts. What year was the first Sounders game played at what is now Lumen Field? You know, in putting this quiz together, this was, I think, one of the more interesting answers I came across. I knew that the games had been played there before the MLS Sounders were in the stadium, but I really did not have a good sense of when that had actually started. Uh, yeah, I didn't live in the state for any of these dates, so I was not there. So if you were looking for me, I wasn't there. <laughs> I was, but I, you know, I lived in Everett and I didn't venture into Seattle very much until I was 21 because I didn't have much of a reason. I think the rare trip involved a car full of people and a whole bunch of Dick's Burgers. So the correct answer was 2002. And it was a Sounders doubleheader with Sounders and Sounders women both playing at this match. It's a, it's a fun little tidbit. So Aaron and Martin are so far our front runners, both having gotten that question right. So for question number two, who scored the first NWSL goal for the rain? Some good possible answers. All of them, I think, scored at least a few goals. A couple of them still scoring goals for the rain. But who got that first one? I think it's, you know, you could really throw a, throw a guess at anybody. The team wasn't scoring a ton of goals for those first several games. So it should be easy to pick. Yeah. I mean, you've got a, you've got a 25% chance of being right. That's only two people got the last question, right? All right. Half of our class got that right was Christine Nairn with the first rain goal of the NWSL. Ooh, and Martin jumps into first. Who had the first Sounders hat trick in MLS? I miss being in the stadium for hat tricks. Those are really That's good. Yeah, that was fun. Was our last one Jordan Morris, FC Dallas playoffs? It was, because I don't think anyone scored a hat trick in the two games we were all in the stadium for last year. I wish they would have. I think that Jordan Morris hat trick was a personal success for me. That was a great day. I think that that checks out. I have very fond memories of David Estrada's hat trick. It was mm -hmm. a, a beautiful day. Blaze and Kufo had the first Sounders hat trick in the MLS. You against... don't see him often anymore. You don't. Didn't hear his name a lot before that hat trick either. But you sure did when he scored the three goals. Yes, three times specifically. And Aaron retakes the lead. It's getting closer now though. Yeah, everyone's shaking off the rust a bit. Uh, so next question, who was the first homegrown player signed by the Sounders? 
there have been there have been so many yeah. since the first. A few of them have done a lot better than the others, but they're we've tried. We keep there, trying. There have definitely been hits and misses. Yes. Uh, I personally feel very invested in the current stock being the sort of resident Academy and Defiance beat guy for Sounder at Heart. But, uh, you know, I'm really excited to see what Danny Leva can do this year after really losing a basically a full year to injury and COVID. But uh, very hard when you're younger. I can't imagine that that's fun. No. So the first one was DeAndre Yedlin. Where is he currently? Is he in Turkey? Turkey. He's in Turkey. Galatasaray, I believe. We'll bring him home eventually. Doing, doing a lot of fun stuff, like scoring a goal and then getting a red card, although I think it was two yellows. So a very good combo. It's an exciting game, regardless of how you look at it. Yeah. The Reign got their first NWSL win 12 games into their inaugural season. What team did they beat? I did say earlier, they weren't scoring a lot of goals to start that first season, but uh, they started falling in once once a couple players showed up. Megan Rapino and Hope Solo in particular, really, you know, that's a lot of quality to add to any team and at pretty key positions. Yeah. Sometimes you have a bad summer. Sometimes you have a bad first 11 games. Hopefully you don't have a bad summer and a bad first 11 games. That would make for a yeah. rough season. It's definitely not what you want, but no. you know, they certainly rebounded from that year. Uh, 2014 and 15 in particular were very good years for the rain, but uh, you know, sadly still, still in the hunt for that elusive league championship They're hard to come by a whopping eight people got that question right that's uh you know it's pretty impressive so um christine nairn and jess fishler both scored in that win in case you're keeping track of the goal scorers and i do believe that is sounder at heart creator dave clark on a hot streak with four correct answers in a row got a fire emoji what more could you want nba jam style what year did megan rapino score the rain's first hat trick we do like hat tricks here love a hat trick but when did that first one happen i'm gonna go out on a limb and, pro and say that it probably wasn't the year that they were really bad well the year they weren't really bad was not an available answer but 2014 and 15 were both really good years for them. I'm not giving away any any cheating hints. Making an observation. It's a, you know, it's an exciting team for this year, I think. There's a lot of new, particularly attacking talent. Should be fun to watch. So six of you got that one right. Megan Rapino got that hat trick on opening day of 2015. It was a 5-1 win. That's a lot of goals. Fittingly, what I can only assume is the real Kim Little is now on fire with five straight correct answers and in the lead. Hmm. So our next question is, who did the Sounders beat in their first MLS road win? I think we can all remember that first home win, but who did that first road win come against? Obviously, presumably, none of us were in that stadium for that win. Though Maybe. I, I think a handful of us have been there since then for some special occasions. I think there's a good chance that a number of people watching or playing have been in this stadium to see the Sounders win before. I happen to be there. That might be giving away too much of a hint if you track my location for some reason. You're a globetrotter, a real Carmen Sandiego-esque 
individual. It could be any of these. Yeah. I don't think that's giving away too much. Was it the I, galaxy? I hope they sang Jingle Bells afterwards. Seemed like it would be a fitting time. It would be appropriate, I think. So Toronto FC was that first road win. I think that's a, you know, that's a lovely little bit of synchronicity. You love to see it. You absolutely do. And next up we've got who was the first Sounders designated player? I mean, they've all been designated players for the Sounders for varying amounts of time. Some of them left pretty abruptly. Some of them have come back. I have strange memories of that. I think, was it opening day that the team announced that Blaze and Kufo had left the team just like just before kickoff? I think I was in the, the downstairs at Temple I reading think Twitter and learning than, that. I think that's worse than a Friday afternoon news dump. That is worse than a Friday afternoon news dump for sure. So Freddie Leungberg, that probably is the wrong pronunciation, but it's close. He was the first. And he always has that. I'm sure that's the most prestigious thing on his resume now. More prestigious than his time in India. And Kim Little is back on fire. Great job, Kim Little. Who did the Reign beat in 2014 for their first playoff win? Was it Portland? Was it a, a rivalry victory? That'd be extra sweet. Did they somehow contribute to the demise of FT FC Kansas City? That would be kind of sad. I mean, it didn't happen just then, but these things are never immediate. It's a slow build to the demise of a team. That's probably not a funny thing to joke about. Condolences. As long as it's not my team facing the demise. I mean, they were, a, they were a soccer team. They probably didn't deserve that. They deserve better investment, as do all women's teams, frankly. Yes. Uh, Snaps to that. Washington spirit. Washington versus Washington violence. You hate to see it when you're on the other side of it. But this was a playoff win, so I'm good with it. Yeah. Okay. In what year did the Sounders beat RSL for their first playoff series victory? I remember being in the stadium for some playoff losses to RSL. It was sad. Fun, but sad. And I very fondly remember that win. But what year did it come in? Is it 2009? Is that a first season thing? Seems maybe unlikely. I feel like we'd all remember that. Was it Made a it to the playoffs, but. The first playoff game, the first Sounders playoff game I was in the stadium for was a loss. It was bad. It was against the Galaxy in 2014. I remember that one. I was very sad for like days afterwards as a small child. Was that the one that they lost on a just absolutely ridiculous Juninho goal from entirely so. too far out? Yeah, that sucked real bad. I remember after the first half, I was like, oh, we are for sure winning this game. That 2012 victory over RSL, though, that was nice. That was courtesy of maybe the brightest moment of Mario Martinez's, at least MLS Sounders career. Can't speak for the rest of his career. I haven't followed super closely, but. I believe we're to our next round. Um, and our topic here is making history. It's something we all hope to do in good ways. Preferably good ways. We're starting off with a bad way. Um, who has had the most red cards in the Sounders MLS era? I mean, I, 
I know all of these guys had red cards and some pretty memorable ones. It's probably not good to like hit people or headbutt them or as funny as it might be, rip up a referee's notebook. At least you get a cool song for that one. Yeah. Probably don't want to attempt to hit someone in, you know, areas where you shouldn't touch anyone without consent. Uh, whether you make contact or not, it's not okay. Um, I do think that one was rescinded, if I remember correctly. But uh, how many? How many did a guy like Clint Dempsey get in his time in Seattle? I do think for the answer here that you should go with your gut. Your gut's usually right. And on this one, it most likely is. First thought, best thought. And you look at all of those names, and there's probably one that you think, that guy had a lot of red cards. It's probably the one that ended up with the nickname of the Honey Badger. Yeah. Oz Ozzy Alonso's four red cards is more than anyone else. A name surprisingly high on the list, James Riley. Seems like a super nice guy. Got multiple red cards as a sounder. Who scored the winning goal when the Sounders beat Monterey in Mexico during the 2011 CCL group stage? They became the second MLS team to beat a Mexican team on Mexican soil in that competition. It was a very surprising result. CCL results are always surprising. Even if they, even if they end up the way you think they were going to end up, the way you got there was surprising. It's, it's a guarantee. Always. It's a fun surprise, though, even when they suck, even when it's bad. It's always a fun time, as long as you don't bring, you know, a lot of, like, underlying racism and assumptions about the caliber of person on the other team because of where they play. Yeah. That's probably not a thing you should do. But if Maybe you can avoid that, it's usually a really fun time. Um, a fun game to play is count how many times the stretcher crew gets signaled on and then signaled off. My ability to count's not that good. I get tired of that game real fast. Yeah. Also, do not suggest doing that as a drinking game. You would probably die. That's dangerous. But Flaco Fernandez, also dangerous, particularly in that game. He had the one goal as the Sounders won that game. You love to see it. You really do. Kim Little really crushing the game here. She's great at multiple things, apparently. Small and mighty. Uh, Clint Dempsey scored the fastest goal in Sounders MLS history against San Jose in 2015. But just how fast was that goal? I think Clint Dempsey has had some pretty fast goals. I, I believe I remember one from World Cup uh, happening quite fast. Yeah, that was, a, that was a good one. Good times. He broke his nose in that game, too. It's a... Uh... You know, I, I assume he still did the deuce face at somebody with a broken nose because he likes to piss people off, score goals, and go fishing, and I assume couldn't go fishing on the field, so did the other two things he loves. I mean, if people can go diving, I assume there's enough water for fish, so maybe he just forgot to bring the rod. There might be enough water, but there's usually a lot of activity. I think fish would avoid the field. Might be a little bit scared. 11 of you got that one right. Clint Dempsey scored, according to Wikipedia, the fastest goal in 23 seconds. I've seen other claims that it was maybe 18 seconds, but this isn't a super scientific thing. Wikipedia is good enough. That is my um, opinion in college. Wikipedia is good enough. The sources are usually decent if there's sources. Yeah. So in 2014, Kim Little and Obafemi Martin set identical team records for goals in a season. How many goals did they score? 15 seems like quite a bit. I mean, Especially, I mean a lot of goals. Yeah, I've never scored that many goals. Probably yeah. not my whole life put together. But is that a lot for both Obafemi Martins and Kim Little to score and for no one to have beat that yet? Well, I sure hope they get beaten soon. I'd and love it. I think that'd be great. Yeah. 
I feel like 2014 was a good year for soccer. 2014 was a lot of fun. Yeah. That summer was, you know, was something beautiful. 2014 was my first year really paying attention to soccer, so I think I was pretty spoiled. One of my first home matches was the one where we celebrated the Open Cup win. And I was like, hey, look, a trophy. That's a good time. 17 goals. That's a lot of goals. I think it's really fun that they both did that in the same season. Part of me would like to think that there was like some planning involved there. They had a deal. They, they coordinated. They got together on Slack and they were like, hey, how many goals are you going to score this year? Did Ken Little get that question right? I hope so. She must have. In the building. Who is the only player to record multiple MLS hat tricks for the Sounders? I mean, all of these guys have hat tricks. Just how many, though? I mean, Freddie Montero seems like a guy who could light teams up. Hopefully still can light teams up. I think he can still light teams up. I've written about it. I think he can do it. I hope we see some Freddie Montero hat tricks this year. I Maybe would, he can stretch that lead. Yeah. Lamar Nagel, I mean, he it is underappreciated how good he was in 2014. Speaking of a fun year, he was lights out. I think averaged something like 0.74 goals and assists per 90 that season. Had something like nine goals and 10 assists. It was outrageous. Ridiculous. This one was Clint Dempsey. Outrageous. Ridiculous. Fast goals. Three goals. Multiple times. You Look can do him. it all. That's you got Hayes cool. against Portland and Orlando. Two teams you love to beat. One maybe more than the other, but... I have a grudge against Orlando. I've decided. I think it'll be fun. I mean... Having spent a little time there, I think the world has a grudge against Orlando, but... Yeah, I have spent a lot of time in Orlando. It's, yeah. it's a place. It is a place. Who holds the goals record for the rain? You know, make, Megan Rapino and Jess Fishlock both technically have been there since the beginning. Kim Little had the record for most goals in a season. Bethany Balser's new, but she's coming in hot. Apparently it's not enough to get a Crocs deal, but uh, that's not her fault. I assume that that's sexism. Calling you out, Crocs. Where are you at? Pick up the phone. Is Crocs playing? Is Crocs secretly Kim Little? Probably not, but maybe they should be. Maybe if they paid attention, maybe if they were aware enough to be in on this game, then Bethany Balser could get a Crocs deal. Like she but should. Megan Rapino is the holder of that goals record. I think, you know, she misses a fair amount of time to injury and national team duty, but she gets the job done when she's here. 37 goals. Again, that's, that's a, a bunch of goals. Kim Little still just ripping it up. She's got 15 in a row. I assume she's going to get 17. Maybe she'll stop there. Maybe she'll beat her record. That would be fun. Who has the most combined regular and postseason goals for the Sounders? I mean, could it could it be Freddie Montero? It I think might. that's he's got a lot of goals. But did they come in the postseason? You know, they they did not. But did he do enough in the regular season? Can he I mean, fingers crossed, he's going to stretch his number this year hopefully he can break that playoff duck but uh god knows he didn't really get an opportunity in vancouver to do it that poor team just sad they have socialized medicine though so that is you, can, you can't have it all you really can't do you want to go to the doctor or do you want good soccer some might say those are on equal footing i don't know about it it's Clint Dempsey again. Do he's upside your head. He really was upside your head. Just he is. tearing it up. 
So I believe that was 53 goals that he has. And Freddie is not very far behind him. So maybe we'll see a new leader. This right season- up close. The two of them are tied for regular season goals. And Freddie's got the lead on all competitions. But Clint was doing the work in, pl- in the playoffs. Maybe not quite to the same level as Raul Rui Diaz, but getting the job done. So who leads the reign in NWSL appearances? Got a, a number of people who are, I mean, all four are good options. Stephanie Cox is a, a, you know, tireless machine at this point. But she did retire and then come out of retirement. Beverly Yanez left the team. So, you know, did she play enough in her time before heading down to California to start a family and now join, I believe the team is California Surf? Or is it just Fishlock? The, it. There is no wrong answer here, but there is. There is literally a single right answer. And, and 11 it, you, it, have you got it right. Lauren is, Barnes has been kicking around since day one. She has 138 appearances. It's a lot of games. It really is. Who is the only player named to the MLS Best 11 multiple times as a sounder? Was it the Chad Marshall, Defender of the Year, Dad Marshall? So, I mean, I know Jordan Morris and Nico Odero were both named to it in 2020. Did, did they both get a call earlier in their careers with the Sounders? Maybe. I mean, Jordan Morris in that rookie year, he took home Rookie of the Year. Did he also make the best 11? Lodero's led the team to two MLS Cups. Is that enough to make... An MLS best eleven? We've seen. I, Clint, I would think so. We've seen Clint Dempsey pop up in a lot of these answers, so maybe he has it pushed out here. I mean, yeah, they're all they're all good options, but none are better than Chad Marshall. But it's true. So uh, you know, twice with the Sounders, one more time than anybody else. You could argue that it should have been more than that. So, I certainly would argue that it should have been more than that. I will argue most things, so I would definitely argue that. Kim Little holding strong, but tacos and haircut, making a push. You've got that fire emoji. Danny Leva became the youngest player to start an MLS game for the Sounders against what team? I mean, is it against the Montreal Impact? He started the home opener against the Chicago Fire in 2020. Is that his first start? I'm, I'm not here to tell you the answers until the question's over. I'm just asking him. I think I remember this game. And I think I ended up, maybe this gives too much away, but I was very upset about how this game went through the middle portion of the game. I was happy at the end, but the middle was rough i think if we all search our hearts we know the answer it has left an indelible mark sadly Mm -hmm. maybe you know maybe not on the record books aside from that he remains the youngest player to start a game based on this game hopefully when he started that game against the vancouver whitecaps he should have also gotten his first sounders goal as an mls player and he got absolutely robbed by the refs you hate to yeah. see it. You really hate you, to see it. You absolutely hate to see it. Really, just, Justin right. Dillon is the truest victim there, though. He did nothing wrong. Now we're on to round three, roster curiosities. I spend a lot of time looking at rosters, and there are a lot of curiosities, so. A lot of them. Let's see what happens. Which player never played for either the Reign or the 2012 Sounders women? I mean, we've talked a lot about Megan Rapinoe and 
specifically Hope Solo playing for the rain. So mm-hmm. couldn't be either of them. Did Sydney LaRue play for either of those teams or Abby Wambach for that matter? I mean, I remember the, the rain doing some sort of deal that involved Abby Wambach, but did she play for him? A lot of people played on that 2012 Sounders women team. Yes, a lot. Sixteen of you got that right. Abby Wambach never played for either team. Although the Rain did acquire her rights, I believe during 2015, the season she sat out to prepare for the 2015 World Cup. I think she did well in that World Cup, so maybe it was worth it. She did. I'm not bitter about it. Now, sort of an odd one. What school have the Sounders drafted the most players from? I feel like, particularly with Ziggy there, they, they had a bit of a reputation as a team that liked UCLA players for good reason. But and they also really like Stanford kids. They do. They like a smarty, a smart boy. But I do have to put in a plug for UW. I do have a lot of soccer players in my business classes, so maybe it's UW. I mean, UW and Seattle U both have been pretty good programs. They're local. It's easy for the team to watch them. They have good relationships with the coaches at both teams. A pair of brothers, from one from each school. That's a pretty fun thing. The two roll-ons. Pretty good additions from each school, but you know, which well have they returned to more than any other? Seattle yeah. University. I believe they've they've drafted three players from Seattle U. Only one of them ever made the roster, but Alex rolled on. One of those one of the people they drafted there ended up at uh, Timbers too, which is not a path you like to see your draft picks take. Yuck. If your draft pick ends up with the Timbers, something probably went wrong. Really wrong. How many homegrown players have the Sounders signed? We were saying earlier, there have been quite a few. They really have, especially with um, when S2 and Defiance joined the, the pipeline. Got a lot more um, coming out of there. Really kicked things up a notch. Started making multiple homegrown signings every year. Maybe not every year, but, you know, actually pretty much every year since then. We'll probably see that trend continue this year as well. Seems likely. Schmetzer seems pretty high on a few of those young guys. Guys like Reed Baker Whiting and Cody Baker. Seen him specifically shout those guys out. Good, fun players. Even if they get signed, they're probably going to spend some time with Tacoma. So it's a good, if you like watching the, you know, the future of the club, it's a good team to keep an eye on. Yeah. So that number is 16. Maybe we'll see it go up in the next coming weeks. How many players suffered season-ending injuries for the rain in 2019? This doesn't seem like a good question to have to ask. It is not. That it was that's a rough, a rough year. I think it's a remarkable feat that they did as well in that season as they did with all of the injuries that they suffered. They rostered 32 players that year, which is a lot more than an NWSL team regularly does. Well. It was a fun, maybe fun is the wrong. It seemed like they were having fun. So I'll say fun. But watching those home games where behind one of the goals up in the stands was basically a whole section of injured brain players who were effectively like coaching the team from up there, shouting down to defenders to help organize them. Six of those players were on season ending injuries. That's real sad. That's brutal. Kim Little really, you know, grabbed onto that lead and is not letting go. 
So prior to 2021, which was the only year of Garth Lagerwey's tenure as general manager of the team in which the Sounders did not sign a former Sounder? But maybe that was phrased oddly. So the Sounders, since Garth Lagerwey joined, have signed or brought in a former MLS Sounder each year with one exception. Which year did they not bring in a former Sounder? This might be giving away too much, but I will say they learned their lesson not to continue doing this in some year. It, it does seem like the sort of thing that might, I don't know, like cause you to have a bunch of 8 a.m. finals, something yeah. like that. It's a, bad, it's a bad move. You want to keep the soccer gods happy. And apparently the way to do that is by signing former Sounders. When you're constructing your roster, you got to keep track of your TAM, you got to keep track of your jam, and you've got to keep track of bringing back former Sounders. It's right up there at the top. Because if you don't, you might have a red card wedding. I'm convinced that that's the reason. If they had brought in a former Sounder, that guy probably could have talked, you know, Clint Dempsey down, and maybe he doesn't get tossed out of that game. And Can anyone talk Clint Dempsey down? I don't. I feel like it would have to be a really a really important former sounder to make that happen. I mean, and it, yeah, I, I don't know. It's a big ask, but anything's possible. Okay. Prior to 2021, the rain had rostered someone that was the only player in league history from all but which country? Getting yeah. specific here. Again, I, you know, mea culpa, any weird phrasing is on my part. I wrote these questions. That's, uh, if any of it is confusing, that's my bad. But the gist is that the Reign have had a player who at the time of signing and up until this year was the only player from that country in the league. Was it Trinidad and Tobago? Samoa? Is it... Is Jess Fishlock the only Welsh player in the league? Is it the Netherlands? Or Holland? You know, whatever you prefer. I like the Netherlands because I like to say the. Like it's the Ohio State. The Netherlands. And it was the Netherlands. Uh, you. you get to say it again. The Netherlands. Yeah, pretty pretty fun that the the league has one new Welsh player this season. So no longer is Jess Fishlock all alone in the United States. Excluding the United States, what nation has produced the most Sounders players with five coming from said nation? I mean, they love their Swedish players. They really do. I love their Swedish players. Sad to see one of them go. Love Gustav. Pour one out for Gustav Svensson. I mean, I will, but it's going to be into my mouth. I feel like anything else would be a waste. I think you would appreciate that. I think so, too. Carl. <laughs> Columbia? I mean, there have been a, a few Colombians. I We've think got three right now. Oh, we currently have three. Oh, Freddie, Madronda, and Jamar. You're right. Is it Mexico? How many Mexican players have they had? I think maybe that one's weird because it doesn't really count Mexican American players, which they've probably had a number of. But the answer is Colombia. Colombia. It's uh, currently have three of them. So three of them. Oh, Got John Kennedy Hurtado as well, and another player that I am just downright blanking on right now. It'll come to me, I'm sure. But that's not really important and not worth holding the game up. It will definitely happen as soon as you press submit on your final. Yes. When Bethany Balser signed for the Reign, she became the first NWSL player from what college athletics association? That's a mouthful. Is it the Association of Christian College Athletics, the ACCA, the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, the NAIA, 
the National Christian College Athletic Association, the NCCAA, or the National Junior College Athletic Association. It's a lot of acronyms. A lot of acronyms. It is, uh, you know, an impressive feat to have been an undrafted player and then become the first from your, I think, well, definitely from her school and also from the NAIA. That alone should get you a call deal. I think so. But no, Crocs are, you know, sleeping, just sitting over there hating. This is a fun one. How many different times was Lamar Nagel, esteemed pizza class guest, signed or acquired by the Sounders? Six seems like too many, but frankly, I, I don't know. Could be, could be more. Maybe when he gets into coaching down the road, he'll come back. We can add one more. With the New Jersey release, he actually commented on one of the Sounders posts and asked if he could re-sign for a day so that he could get the jersey. So I mean, I think, I think they should. They haven't brought back a former Sounder yet. And we know that that's really important to do. So please start doing that soon, Garth. It's four. That is a sizable amount of times to come back. It is a significant number of times to return to one team. Once a sounder, always a sounder. But again and, ag and again and again. Four times a sounder, always a sounder. Maybe we have to workshop that. So the Sounders have had a Washington native on the roster every season since joining MLS. True or false? Timer's a little shorter on this one, so you have two options to choose from. Should have said, maybe we're moving into a couple of true or false questions. That might have been a good, good preface to this one. But, uh, you know, got I mean, a number of them right now. Washington has had a surprising number of really good soccer players. So a lot of them. Possible, but it wasn't. Still. <sighs> Sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to trick anyone if that was the, the case there, but got another true or false for you here. The Sounders have acquired three or more players from a single foreign club. That is not a statement. That is a question. I mean, it's a statement, and then you decide whether that statement is true or false. Maybe I'm just lying to you. You never know. I, I don't think anyone's lying here. I mean, it might be. We did encourage cheating, so there might be some deceit, but I don't think outright lying. And again, false. The most they've acquired from any single team is two players. They've done that a couple times, but maybe most notably from Levante, where they brought in both Obafemi Martins and... Andreas Evenschitz from. That's fun. Some, some big impact players. So all four Federal Way high schools have produced MLS players, nine players in total. Name one of those four high schools. Sort of getting back to that prior statement that lots of quality players have come out of Washington. And uh, I think, you know, just click in that box and type in, type in your answer. That's a lot of high schools for one town or city, I guess. I mean, it's probably a lot more populous than, like, I went to Kamiak High School in Mukilteo. Mukilteo is pretty small, and technically there's two high schools. I mean, the other one's in Everett. Everett has, like, three high schools, though, and it's not that big. That's got me beat, though. I was at Sumner. That was one high school that they packed dramatically more people than was supposed to be allowed into, but hmm. the only one. Yeah. 
Uh, eight of you got correct answers. The four are Thomas Jefferson High School, Beamer High School, Decatur, and Federal Way. And I think we're heading to the next round. Yeah. And on that last one, Federal Way and uh, Thomas Jefferson both have three MLS players from each of them, I believe. So that's neat. Good job, guys. We are to the assorted trivia round. We're going to start with, what is the only team the Sounders have scored multiple hat tricks against? I mean, I'd really love for that to be the Timbers. Is it? I don't know. Could be Toronto. Chivas were really bad for like the entire time the Sounders were in the league. Could be them. That was my first Sounders game was a game against Chivas USA. We won 4-2, but I cannot confirm nor deny whether a hat trick was part of those four. Mm. My first Sounders game was against the, uh, the Houston Dynamo. I think in 2010, maybe 2011. I think 2010. Yeah, I think by 2011, I was, if not a season ticket holder, then very much a regular. But and the Columbus Crew hat tricks from. They did not decide to score any hat tricks in the MLS Cup final against the Columbus Crew. Rude. Really think they should have done that. but I think that would have been a good idea. He can't rewrite history. The Reigns' largest margin of victory came against Portland in 2014. What was the scoreline? All of these are delightful scorelines. They are great. I saw this against Portland from any Seattle soccer team, I would be thrilled. You really, truly love to see it. But, uh, you know, was it a shutout? Did they keep a clean sheet? Was this a game where there was a hat trick? Hmm. Possibilities are endless. Well, there's four of them, but out of those four, it's endless. Yeah. You know, was... Was it 6-2? Did Portland come out to a, a strong lead and start feeling good about themselves, not considering that they had taken the most dangerous lead? If, if it was that, we got bonked in the head after that. Absolutely clattered. It was 5 nothing. That is a sizable lead. It was a, a very fun game. Naho Kawasumi had two goals and assist. Kim Little had two assists and a goal assisting on both of Naho's goals. It was a good time. Now I just mentioned hat tricks, but what player has had multiple NWSL hat tricks for the ring? Was it Kim Little, as we just mentioned? We learned earlier that Sydney LaRue has definitely played for the ring. Did she score hat tricks while she was here? Sometimes you learn things when you're taking finals. Sometimes you do. Bev Yanez, the Sunshine Assassin, did she have multiple hat tricks? I mean, with or, a name like that, you'd think so. You, you would think so. Megan Rapino has the team's record for goals, so maybe it's her. Maybe some of those came in sets of three. She does love to, to be flashy, to show a little bit of flair. And it was Megan Rapino had the first one in 2015. Kim Little got her lone hat trick just a few short months after that in 2015. Rapino got her second in 2017 in a bonkers 5-4 win over Western New York Flash. That name is a mouthful. Kim Little just simply will not be defeated, except in terms of like who has the most hat tricks. The Sounders made league history in 2017 with their 4-3 comeback win against which team? They have had quite a few sizable comebacks in recent years. Some really bonkers ones. And, uh, I mean, two in the same year. One really fun one last year. 
it was mm-hmm. stressful and terrible before it was fun, but it ended up being fun. I love a good comeback like when we're just really good the whole match. Yeah. I prefer when we're just really good the whole match in the playoffs. I think that's that's the best. That's ideal. Yeah. That match was a lot to handle. I was live tweeting and had to pretend like I hadn't like completely given up. I was like, we can do this, guys. I didn't believe it. it. So incredibly proud of the 14 of you who got that right. It was a 4-3 win against DC United. And in that same season, they had a 3-3 comeback draw against New England Revolution. Can't count the Sounders out. Which of these four Sounders players never appeared on an official FIFA cover? I mean, they're all, you know in their broader stature in the game, big players, huge players in the nations that they come from. But one of them has not been on a FIFA cover and thus is a smaller player in the broader sense of the game than the other three. They were on the FIFA cover of my heart. You know, maybe... Maybe Clint Dempsey not never got that official nod. Maybe he just got, you know, like a digital one that you could download from the MLS website. And it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like your parents printing you a diploma, but it was Freddie Leungberg. I am never going to say that name right. And frankly, what's he going to do? Come fight me? If you say it different every time, eventually you'll get it. Or I could just create infinite possibilities for saying it wrong. That too. Seems like a fun option, I guess. I think so. Which league award has never been won by a rain player? I mean, I feel like I could think of deserving winners of all of these. You know? I think the answer may shock you. I certainly was shocked by this answer. Is it that they've never had a defender of the year? Seems like kind of bonkers, but it also seems super bonkers that, you know, they had what was arguably the best goalkeeper in the world for a period of time. And I can't imagine that she wouldn't win it. Rookie of the year? I mean, got players like Bethany Balser who tear it up as a rookie, but no, it was goalkeeper of the year. Absolute snub. She's never been blessed in that way. Those kinds of things are all popularity contests anyways. Yeah. We're going recent for this one. Oh, yeah. In 20, the Sounders set a team record for the largest margin of victory by winning 7-1 against which team? I mean, they've, they've put some absolute wallopings on all of these teams. I feel like that's a term that doesn't get used enough, walloped. But, uh, you know, that's all four of those teams have a propensity to just be hot garbage on a soccer field every once in a while. And I believe that said team managed to turn their season around after that. It's the kind of demoralizing defeat that forces one to re-examine their whole life, their priorities really decide if this is how they want to spend their lives. The Sounders were just really helping out. They were. It's, you know. We'd all do it for a friend, you know? It's the San Jose Earthquakes. Just beat up on those Silicon Valley bros. (laughs) What song... Do the Sounders sing in the locker room after road wins? I think I might have given this one away at the beginning of the quiz. So if you've been paying attention, just think about everything I've said in the past hour. If we give a couple questions away, really it's making up for the fact that the way I designed this quiz kind of screwed people on the true and false. That's, it's like a makeup. 
Yeah. But still, is it, you know, is it a Christmas song? Is it Frosty the Snowman? It might be weird. Or Jingle Bells. Frosty the Snowman's a weird song. I think we should all just take a moment, maybe after the quiz, don't get distracted, but he's a magical grown man who hangs out with a bunch of kids. It's not okay. And it's Jingle Bells. It is Jingle Bells. I always have to stay up late after Roadwinds until the Sounders team puts out the Jingle Bells video because I cannot finish. I cannot end my day without that content. It's it's worth it. It's sweet sweet content. A little bit less sleep. It's okay. Speaking of songs, ECS and other supporters in the stadium sing the song Seattle at the start of every match. What artist originally recorded Seattle? Is it Limp Biscuit? Woody Guthrie? I know Woody Guthrie sang a song that we all sing, but is it Seattle? We do sing a lot of songs. A lot, a lot of songs. Could a be, lot of songs. Could it be Pearl Jam? They're a Seattle band. Is it, I mean, Perry Como? It's a... Do you think Perry Como is who the news station's named after? Just change a letter and yeah, rock with it. Different, but he sang the song, so he did. And I'm proud of all of you who got that right. Ooh. This is this next question is a real real fun one. Um, what is the name of the song Clint Dempsey released ahead of the 2006 World Cup? Dropped a music video with it. It was in partnership with Nike. There was a, Clint, a random Clint Dempsey song that for like a year of my high school experience, I had to go on YouTube and listen to it every day because it just got me really hyped up for the day. Mm -hmm. Clint Dempsey has that effect on you. He does. Was it? It's poppin'. Hot that's fire. And that's on Don't tread. Or uh, deuce upside your head, parentheses, I'm Clint Dempsey, and parentheses. Maybe he's like Taylor Swift and he loves himself some good parentheses. He might. Are all four of those real songs? No, they're not. But all of the ones that aren't Deuce Upside Your Head are real songs. Don't Tread is the one from 2006, though. It's, it's popping. I was referencing. Ooh. That's uh, a, it's so hard for absolutely I, no reason. I did recently listen to both that and Hot Fire, which both are tracks that he released in one capacity or another from a full unreleased album in Where 2014. Is I really hope he pulls a Taylor Swift and just drops that out of the middle of nowhere. It'd be great. I'd love it. It would be so good. That's the pandemic. We deserve that. We really do. What is the name of the feature length documentary covering the 2012 Sounder season produced by Levy Films? Levy? Either of those? I think it's Levy. Could be. Is it Ziggy when they expect you to zag? The Bluest Skies? American Football? Or Glory Road? If it's not Ziggy when they expect you to zag, I think we need to make something and name it that. I mean, if it's not, then I will make, I will make a tribute video to Ziggy Schmidt. You know, I, I attended the Sounder at Heart screening of that movie, and I won a poster and a copy of the film and a case of Glazo, the best energy drink I've ever consumed. Rest in peace, rest in power. I still miss you, Glazo. Here's a fun bit of trivia. Yeah. Which Parks and Recreation character is a Sounders fan in the show? Who is your favorite Parks and Rec character? I mean, it's so hard to choose, but it is definitely jean Ralphio Saperstein. That's a good show. He is just all vibes. I accidentally quote him frequently. I'm just start singing something and I'll be like, oh, that's a jean Ralphio thing. I mean, just singing anything is the worst is like a perfect response to almost anything. But I've also found myself randomly just like while my wife is in a meeting, like 
shuffling through the kitchen, go, don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. But it's Donna Meagle. It she, uh, when reconnecting with her future husband, Joe, informs him that uh, sometimes she's just got to do stuff. She might like go missing because she's fly fishing or had a Sounders game. I, and yeah. I respect that. So we are now to the Yacht College course review portion of the evening. This is that's how we're going to wrap things up tonight. Brian Schmetzer referred to those he blessed with insight into his tactical approach in our first Yacht College class as what? Is it the soccer squad? Are you lucky enough to be a member, Tim? I am. But am I a member of the Formation Friends? The Inner Circle? Or is it the Circle of Trust? I think I really learned a lot from my time in said, said group. A clandestine community of sorts called the Circle of Trust. We really bonded over knew who at center back. We did. Shout out to Mark Kastner. The Circle of Trust was then forever memorialized in a t-shirt for the cocktail course by the doctor himself. Ooh, this next one. Um, which sounder considers himself to be a birder? I have to turn this into a tuple. I just have to. Like, there's no way that I let this piece of information go untainted. I mean, I think a sort of like maybe duck hunt is in poor taste for someone who is a bird watcher. But I feel like you could you could just have him holding binoculars instead of a gun and have a dog with him. Everyone like, should have a dog with them unless they're not a dog person or whatever. You can have a cat as long as yeah. it's related to the birds. Absolutely. Cats just there to make friends. Yeah. I think my, my main idea currently is to have a bird with binoculars watching said player play soccer. Ooh, I like that a lot. That's good. I think it would be fun. Now I just have to find some free time. Yeah. Hmm. You know, it's a, uh, I feel like well, bruin has got too many kids to have a spare time to be a birder. But maybe that's like a, you know, rocking his kid to sleep. And he just sits up and watches the birds out the window. But no, it's Shane O'Neill. I feel like I want to know more about Shane O'Neill. Like, he seems like he could be a really interesting guy. Absolutely. I think we should get a Shane O'Neill expose sometime during the season. Who wants to Yeah, run? That was definitely the best, best tea spilled in that, that wine tasting course. Now, speaking of the wine tasting course, Kellen Rowe is an avid wine taster, but what level on the W set has he achieved? That's a good question. I mean, I, I should have at some point looked up what that stands for, but I didn't. Um, hack, and frankly, spent a lot of time on some of the other questions and admittedly phoned it in on some of these last ones, but... Is that a level, level two on the WSET? Grandmaster of the Vine? I feel like that's what they should call it. If it's not maybe, that, they need to fix it. Maybe that's just what you get when you reach like the top. But he's not there yet. He's a level two, though. Working on that level three. Pandemic threw a real wrench in the gears there for him. What was the name of Garth Lagerway's character in his old D&D game with Wade Weber? I mean, it was a really good name, for sure. I mean, I think I've come up with some pretty good names, but not as good as this. Grotius Pig Popper, Steven. I think I'm partial to Steven. Elthor the Mighty, Gerg. Regardless, he took a different route than I have, which is to name any D and D character I create playable character or like periphery after characters from Hello Dolly. Hmm. 
Um, Cause I, I thought that would be fun. Like it's, it's Grotius Pig Popper. It's that just, is a name. There's certainly I, a name. I'm a little worried about the backstory behind that title, but you know. What was the name of the cocktail named after Will Bruin for the mixology course? Is it an, a nod to his Sounder at Heart Network podcast, Bear With Us? Is it an old fashioned? I feel like that's a, a rude dig at a guy to name his drink old fashioned, but you know, seems like he could take a joke. Is it a, you know, a, a reference to his trademark goal celebration? Is it the two thumb punch? Or Bears, Beers, Battlestar Galactica? Frankly, I think those are all really good drink names. I think we just need to make more drinks for him. I think so. Then we can name them all. Post-pandemic life goals. <laughs> and it is Bears, Beers, Battlestar Galactica. Gotta love a combo Will Bruin and The Office reference. What TV show inspired the drawings David Estrada sold to his classmates? I mean, I think this is a, you know, ingenious hustle on David's part, selling drawings from a cartoon show to his classmates, make a little side money. So Biker Mice from Mars was a good one. Maybe not a particularly good one, but it was a cartoon show. Kids liked it. Was it Spongebob? A little bit of a throwback. Was it Scooby-Doo? It was not. It was Dragon Ball Z. It looked like people had a lot of fun with the art class. So if you missed out on that, maybe go grab some art supplies and watch the, the video. It's an <laughs> absolute blast. MLS Watercolors was a sheer delight. David Estrada was as lovely as he always is. David Estrada, maybe the highlight for me of the documentary American football. What is what? was not represented in the theoretical OL Rain band? I think they should start a band. I don't want theoretical in front of it. I want actual OL Rain band. They really should. I'm choosing to believe that only like pandemic distancing protocols is keeping this band from being a reality. But, uh, you know, they've got plenty of musical talent within the group. But one of these instruments was not mentioned. There were shouts for, you know, a backup dancer. Lauren Barnes volunteered herself for that. Megan Rapino apparently has some pipes on her and also just great stage presence. So, I mean, I, I imagine like a maybe more musically gifted Flava Flav. I feel like Megan Rapinoe could rock a big old clock. She could pull that off. I think she can pull off anything, honestly, at this point. Probably. And it's drums, which is, you know, maybe they're just not aware, but new signing Angelina, a young Brazilian player, actually does play the drums a little bit. So they could get a full, full set. Full I'm band going. I'm going to take theoretical out of this band question. It's a real band now. I've decided. Someone tell them. They're 2022 sorry. YachtCon goal. Have a live music portion. Have the OL Rain Band play. What event or holiday do Lamar Nagel and his wife Natalie make pizza to celebrate? My family does homemade pizzas for Christmas Eve. Oh, I think that's a good... That's a fun fun way to bring it in. And then you have cold pizza snack on all Christmas, which is half, half the highlight pizza. That's really good. I don't think, you know, my family doesn't have any specific like Christmas Eve food traditions, usually in non COVID times, 
it's a big like snack food and board games thing. But uh, Lamar and Natalie celebrate Valentine's Day with homemade pizza because Natalie does not like the crowds involved in Valentine's Day, which I also do not like. Yeah, legitimate concern. Both as a a diner and also as a restaurant worker. It sucks. In third place is Dave. In second place is Aaron. And first place, I think we all saw it coming. Kim Little, she is just an unstoppable competitor. Our runners up were Martin R and D and C. Uh, you know, for some of you, it might be a little tougher to track down like Kim Little, I assume I have to get in touch with her agent. But uh, if you can yeah. contact us. Shoot the, us on Instagram or Twitter and tell us what your name was. Um, and we'll get you hooked up with some prizes. Yeah. The uh, first place winner will get their their pick of the bunch, which includes you know, a Jordan Morris Swansea jersey. Those Swansea jerseys are real nice, real good looking. That's with me. I have one. It makes me I also have one. Does it make you sad every time you look at it? Admittedly, I haven't looked at it since the sadness started. It just is tucked in a drawer, so I am choosing not to deal with that emotion. That's um, a good way to handle it. Yeah, but we've got, you know, we've got some gear and gift card from Stoop Brewing. Got a whole bunch of goodies, so if you won, you're in for some treats, uh, but you know, just go ahead and contact us. If you are still feeling in a giving mood, we strongly encourage you to give to the Children's Hospital uh, Autism Center, um, which, I think we still have around $1,500 in direct donations until Jeremiah has to dye his hair blue, which is something I would really like to see. So if we can, if we can work together on that, I think I we think, would all be benefited from Jeremiah having blue hair. I think we'd all really like to see that. I'm sure his kids would love it. So you're doing a service to his kids. You can't say no to the children. And, you know, as has been stated repeatedly over the course of this series of courses, the Autism Center at Children's Hospital does incredible work and the work that they're doing is made even more difficult by the pandemic as they have to navigate shipping the packages that they provide to families uh, rather than being able to deliver them in person, which just adds increased expenses to their operating costs. Um, we, we do have $1,250 to go to hit that blue ocean goal. Uh, so we really, you know, if you played today and you haven't given yet, or you gave today and maybe you feel like you have a little bit more room, we understand it's a pandemic. People's funds and resources are maybe more limited than they usually would be, but we you know, we'd appreciate it one more class to go tomorrow as well. So don't miss out on Garth Lagerway um, teaching how to build a dynasty, which is something I think we all could benefit from. I would like to build a dynasty. Haven't tried yet. Should probably get some tips and tricks from Garth. You know, Garth's contributions to Yacht Con are always really a wonderful insight to get. And he's just a delight to listen to talk. Um, so yeah, definitely encourage you to check that out. And it looks like we are receiving news that all three of our leaders were sounder at heart folks and are passing on the prizes. So if you were the next five, feel free to get in contact with us about your prizes. If your name isn't obviously you. Prizes. Yeah, prizes are great. We'd love to give them to you. I'm sure you'd love to get them. You did great. You should be proud. Yeah. But uh, I think for 
for myself and Beth. I've really enjoyed having you all compete alongside us. Hope you feel your you know, knowledge was tested in a reasonable manner. Hope it wasn't too vigorous or stressful. But uh, on behalf of all of us at Sounder at Heart and at YachtCon, thanks for joining us and hope you join us for the next one. Thanks, y'all.